You are about to hear a romantic drama entitled Unexciting from Street and Smith's Love Story magazine, featuring the love story girl in the role of Kit Watson. And now we bring you the story of Catherine Watson, commonly called Kit, who has a double problem, both sides of it male. One of the men is her grandfather, old Senator Watson, the racing senator, they call him. It's rumored that he has won and lost several fortunes on the turf. The other side of Kit's problem, oh, but he comes in later. Just now, we want you to meet Kit's and her grandfather, seated in the bright spring sunshine in Senator Watson's box on the terrace of the clubhouse at Tam Foran. The other occupant of the box is named Berg, Silas Berg, head of a big betting syndicate. Kit's and her grandfather have just won a bet on Skipjack at ten to one, and Berg is paying out. Senator Watson is doing a bit of gloating. Ah, uh, nice going, Kit. <laughs> It makes us nigh on to 5,000 to the good. Now come time for the cup race, honey, and we'll have a right sizable roll to back Black Rose. Yeah, that's my entry, Berg. Uh, look out for him. Yeah, that old spamming broken down hack. Let me tell you, Berg, that's one of the finest horses that ever carried the Watson color. No horse in my stable ever was now, spamming Now, Granddad, a... remember your blood pressure. Mr. Berg is only trying to get even with you for winning his perfectly good money. <laughs> well, maybe there's something in that. Yeah, it's 2,500. There you are, Senator. Mm. I ought to know better than to bet against you. Oh, sure. Dick and Skipjack want nothing. He was due to lead the field. A little experience is all it takes. Sure, I know. If the horse wins, you pick him. If he loses, Kit's talks you into betting against your better judgment. Oh, now, Mr. Bird. <laughs> Pay no attention to him, honey. He just saw, because I understand horses better than he does. Yeah, <laughs> that's what you say. Well, I guess I'll be mosing along, Senator. I gotta see if they've been taking in enough at the betting windows to make up for what you've been taking away from me here. Look out for the six race, Berg. Me and Black Rose is going to bankrupt you. If she doesn't drop dead of old age in the meantime. Mm. Granddad, mm -hmm. is Black Rose really any good? Best piece of horse flesh I ever owned. Well, you say that about all your horses, Granddad. Seems to me six years is a bit antique for an entry in the Gold Cup race. Now, kids, uh, Black Rose is in fine shape, and she's bound to win. Why, last week when we were trying her out, How she made How much are you a... planning to bet on her, Granddad? Well, now, uh, that is... Did uh... you mortgage anything? Why, kids, you, you mortify me. Uh, don't you trust your old granddad, honey? Not when it comes to horse races. Horse racing and haberdashery. That's your weakness. Well, what's wrong with my haberdashery? Oh, look at yourself. That brown derby, that west coat, that everlasting carnation. I, I don't know how Grandma ever put up with you so long. Well, uh, she, uh, she can't enjoy the, the excitement, God bless her. <laughs> I don't know what you modern girls are made of. All you think of is security, as if that matters. But it does. It matters a lot. Well, being married to that Dan Wyatt of yours ought to be safe enough and uh, dull enough. Of all the serious mind, a conservative straight leash young... Who says I'm marrying Dan? Well, land sakes. Don't tell me you're thinking of throwing him over after all the time you've spent on the boy. Well, no, at least I don't know. You see, he hasn't asked me yet. Hasn't asked you? Jumping Josephat. That's a fine kettle of fish. Wait till I see him. I'll find out whether he's got honorable intention or not. Oh, calm yourself, Granddad. Dan's intentions are honorable enough. It's too honorable, I sometimes think. He, he's got some crazy idea that a man shouldn't marry until he gets $10,000 in the bank. Well, of all the town fools. That's what I've told him, practically. Besides that, well, I'm not sure I want to marry him, even if he did propose. Well, of all the... Uh, here you are, eating your heart out because he don't propose. And still in all, not known if you want him when he does. Well, it, it's just that Dan is a natural-born disapprover. He disapproves of horse racing and women smoking and dancing the rumba and moonlight rides. He, he's so doggone solemn about life. If only just once he'd wear a red necktie and bright green socks or, or do something really exciting. Well, well, uh, speaking of the devil, here comes your rock at Gibraltar now. Hello, oh, kids. Afternoon, Senator. Well, well, Dan, I suppose you turned up to watch Black Rose win the cup. Well, no, as a matter of fact, I came because there's something important I want to ask Kit. Me? Uh-huh. You remember that real estate deal I was talking to you about last week, Kit? Why, yes, I guess so. Well, who wants to hear about a real estate deal at a time like this? Better be thinking of how much you're going to lay on Black Rose. Now, thanks, Senator, but I don't bet on racehorses. No pity. Black Rose is sure thing. Uh, about that real estate deal, Kit. I closed it this morning. I got a nice share of the profit. Ah, oh, that's fine. You better put it on Black Rose, Dan. It amounts to $10,000, oh. and I thought if you, if we, oh, you know how I feel about you, Kit. You can still get good odds on Black Rose if you hurry. Granddad, will you stop interrupting? Now, now go on, Dan. You were saying you got $10,000? 10000 exactly. I've got it right with me. Here, look. 
A certified check for ten thousand. Oh, my, my, that's real pretty. I'll tell you what I'll do, Dan. I'll let you and me step inside, have a mint julep to celebrate. But I uh, came to ask Kit. Uh, that's uh, all right. Kit's will keep, and I've got a proposition, a, a very important proposition. Now, Grand. It'll be all right, Kit. Uh, we won't be gone long. At least we not long enough to miss the sixth race. You just said right here, kids. Keep your eye on the board and see what odds we're getting on Black Rose. Oh. Well, well, what's the matter, Miss Kitts? You look kind of worried. Oh, it's Granddad again, Mr. Burke. Hmm? He's up to some mischief, I can tell by the glint in his eye. I haven't lived with him all these years without knowing that means trouble for somebody. Will you excuse me? I'd better go inside before he ta- talks Dan out of his gold filling. <laughs> Nothing like a mean tulip on a hot day, Dan. Yeah, do you know why I brought you in here? Well, uh, that is no, I can't say that I do. I need cash, Dan, and I need it quick. That $10,000 check of yours would be a godsend, son, if you let me have it. Oh, yes, but I, I wanted that for kits, for our home. Uh, Dan, you saw that tall, uh, black-haired fellow that nodded to me as I came in. Yes. Well, that's Creel, uh, the track secretary. He says Black Rose can't run and she'll be scratched, Dan. Unless I can show a clear title to her. Well, I thought you owned her. Oh, I bought the mare all right, but I gave a demand note for her for 8000 I, Well, I'm, I've been sort of strapped lately, Dan. You see, I, I figured I'd pay off the 8000 with the purse and my winnings on the Tanforan Cup race this afternoon. Great, Scott, you mean you... Yeah, that, that part is all right, son. Black Rose is a sure thing, only... Well, uh, some shark has bought the demand note from the owner, and he's demanding... You you mean he wants you to pay up at once? Yeah, that's about the size of it. And Creel says the horse can't run if you don't take up the note? That's the situation in a nutshell. If I don't get that 8,000, I lose the race and the horse, too. Oh, she's a mighty pretty little mare, Black Rose. Uh, How about it, Dan? I'm sorry, Senator, but I really can't. Isn't that I couldn't raise the cash somewhere else, Dan? A bird would give it to me in a second. I'd take it to, only the interest is kind of high. Interest? Uh-huh. A bird's interested in kits. And uh, you know kits, Dan. What's she got to do with it? Well, uh, just supposing Black Rose is to fall down, or lose, or something, and not that she will, mind. Uh, kits is just loyal enough to get herself hooked up to Berg, uh, just to protect me. But, well, I guess there's no other way out. Oh, yes, there is. Here's the check. Lend me a fountain pen. There, it's certified, so you won't have any difficulty cashing it. Thanks, and don't you worry, son. Black Rose is sure to win. Uh, see you later. i got to go out now and see Creel. Granddad! Granddad, where are you going? Yeah, don't bother me now, honey. i got to go cash a check. Yes, but that, that's Dan's check. Yeah, a nice boy, Dan. I just sold him Black Rose for $8,000. 8000 Yep, he thought you might like to have her for a wedding present. Oh, he didn't think anything of the kind. Just what have you Well, I kind of thought Dan would have more fun out of watching the big race if he had a personal interest in it. So I told him uh, Black Rose was mortgaged for 8000 and I'd lose her if I didn't pay off before the race. But that's not true. Well, what of it? You've been yelling for that boy to do something exciting, something rash. Well, this is it. Oh, what's the matter, Miss Kitts? I want to make a bet. I've got $200 of my own. Now, Miss Kitts, you're not going to put it on Black Rose. She hasn't got a chance. I know it. Oh, I know it. And Grandfather's gone crazy and bet all of Dan's money on him. I have to make it up to him somehow. Well, now, let's see. There's Dream Girl. She's the favorite at three to one. No, the odds aren't long enough. I want a long shot. I know it probably won't win, but it's for one chance. Well, there's Black Rose at 23 to one, but you don't want that. No. Then there's Blazer at 40 to one. Blazer, that'll do. I can't waste any more time. They'll line up the horses up at the barrier. Yeah, but Blazer's a rank outsider. It's Blazer or nothing. Well, Here's my 200 on Blazer to win. Ladies and gentlemen, the sixth race for the world famous Ten for Ann Gold Cup. Over a course. Oh, there goes the last week because the race is about to start. I've got to get back to the box before Granddad misses me. Well, good luck, Miss Kitt. Thanks, I need. Dream Girl is out of line. She's back in position now. Now it's Sticky Bird who's acting up, but he comes back quietly. We're in line. We'll get a start any second now. They're up! Dream Girl, the favorite, gets the early foot. She's running smoothly and easily. Dream Girl leads the pack to the turn. Blazer coming up fast and on the outside. His reddish brown coat gleaming in the sun. Yep, there goes that chestnut to the front. 
Dream Girl is trailing. Dinky Bird and Black Rose are bunched for the pack. Now Black Rose is pocketed in against the rail. She's losing ground, losing it fast. Blazer's out ahead, eating up the track in long, swinging strides. Dream Girl moving up. Black Rose slings away from the rail. She wings out into firm footing on the crown. Boy, is she stepping. They go to the backstretch. Black Rose is gained. She's got the heart of her racing ancestors, but it's no use, I'm afraid. She's still three lengths behind. It's a magnificent race, though. And now they're making the far turn. Dream Girl leading. Blazer's a close second. They straighten out into the stretch. Blazer leading at the rail. Dream Girl and Black Rose running abreast. Two lengths behind. Black Rose surges forward. Here she comes. She closes in on Blazer. Blazer tries to put on steam, but got nothing more to give. Black Rose lunges up to Blazer's neck, up to his nose. Their neck and neck. Black Rose, she swerves. She's, she's staggering. She's up again, though. Breaks his boat attendant. Blazer's jockey's turned his head. He's delayed his horse. Black Rose hurls herself forward on three legs, and she's crossed the wire. Black Rose wins by a lip. Wait, wait, wait a minute, folks. Something's wrong with her. Black Rose swerves to one side. She goes down in a rolling cloud of dust. Looks like a broken leg. The jockey's been thrown clear. He picks himself up, runs back to the floundering mare. She's on her feet again. She's on her feet. She's limping to the winner's circle. Hooray, hooray for Black Rose. She's the winner of the Tan Paran Cup. Black Rose, is she going to be all right? What does the vet say? Oh, she'll be all right, kids. No permanent injury. I'm afraid she'll never be able to race again. Good. I'd never live through another one like this. Yes, you did get kind of excited, didn't you? Naturally, I was excited. That horse represented my chances of marrying you. But she won. You bet she did. And I'm taking no more chances. You're marrying me, young woman, as soon as I get my winnings in the bank. I suppose I haven't anything to say in the matter. Not a doggone thing. Oh, Dan. Oh, what? I'm afraid we'll have to take Granddad along. On our honeymoon? Think of the trouble he'd get into if we didn't. Okay, honeymoon for three. When we get back, we'll buy a ranch and the senator can raise horses. Ranch? Sure. Stock farm. Black Rose is broodmare. I intend to raise the finest racing thoroughbreds in the world. Now, Granddad... Leave him alone, Kiss. I'm the one that needs attention. How about a kiss? Oh, but, Dan, think of the stable boys and, and Granddad. The heck with all of them. Mm-mm. Hey, you know, there's only one hobby that mighty seriously competes with my interest in horses. What's that, Senator? Baby buggies. Always just have kind of a weakness for baby buggies. Oh, you men, you're, you're incorrigible, both of you. You have been listening to a romance featuring the Love Story Girl and presented with the permission of Street and Smith, publishers of Love Story magazine. Listen for the Love Story Girl in a new romance next week. <laughs> 